Hi, I'm Rick Bayless, and I've been exploring, cooking, and eating in Mexico for over 40 years. Now I'm taking you to Mexico City for a deep dive into the classic dishes you've asked to learn. It's time to share my best recipes ever. That's a beautiful bowl of pozole. You know, pozole, it's without a doubt one of Mexico's most popular fiesta dishes. Just think about it. You could have a big pot of pozole simmering on the stove, set out all the fresh and crunchy garnishes to go with it, then let everybody help themselves and doctor up their bowl of pozole to suit their own tastes. I mean, Pozole at its heart is just a pork and hominy soup. And of course, it's got all of these garnishes to go with it. You can find it in restaurants and they exist all over Mexico that specialize in pozole. I'm at a place called Casa Churra in downtown Mexico City. But you can also find a lot of street vendors that sell pozole, oftentimes late at night, so that when people come out of the bars and clubs, they can have a big steaming bowl of pozole before they go home, um, probably to help sober them up just a little bit. Now, when you set out your pozole, there's classic garnishes that go with it. And these are the ones that you'll typically find. This is very thinly sliced head lettuce or iceberg lettuce. Um, that could be replaced by thinly sliced cabbage sometimes. We've got sliced radishes, some onions there. And you just pile them all onto the bowl, just like that. And then what I like to do is the oregano where you crush it between your palms like that and let it cascade down over the bowl. I don't think it would be a bowl of pozole unless you squeeze fresh lime over the top to perk up all of those flavors. Then you get a tostada in your hand, mix everything together and dig in. But this isn't all there is to the story of pozole. One of the most popular places for pozole in Mexico City is part grandma's dining room and part speakeasy. Certainly red pozole and white pozole are the most common ones, but if you ask me, I'll tell you that green pozole is the queen of all pozoles. You have to kind of think about it like um, white pozole meets mole verde or green mole, meaning that this pozole is thickened with pumpkin seeds, it's got herbs in it, it's got a little tomatillo thrown in, but you don't see it very much in Mexico City because it's always associated with the state of Guerrero, just south of here. In fact, it's such a big deal in Guerrero that on Thursday afternoons, it seems like everything in the state closes up and everybody goes out for green pozole. So here in Mexico City, if you ask around, everyone will tell you that the place to have green pozole is at Pozole Moctezuma. This place has been here since the 40s. The fourth generation in the family is running it now. So you just think about this. The great grandmother came here and she settled just on the outskirts of the Tepito neighborhood. And on Thursday afternoons, she started making green pozole and turned her living room into a little restaurant for people that knew about green pozole. And eventually, the restaurant became the entire apartment. And you still have to buzz the apartment building and be led in to come to Pozole Moctezuma. Now, when you see it come to the table, it will completely 
completely blow you away with all of the incredible garnishes that go into green rosola. stuff is crazy good. She had me taste it and then she sprinkled a little bit of mezcal over the top of it and it like everything blooms in it when you put that little mezcal in there. On the egg that goes in first because it's going to cook with everything and thicken it all up. That hot broth does wonders to it. The crunchy chicharron and it's starting to soften just a little bit. And where did those sardines come from? I mean, when you eat it, it doesn't taste fishy. It just tastes so rich and meaty. Oh man, <laughs> this stuff, the textures, the flavors, it's beyond description. If you're gonna make the best ever red pozole, well, you're gonna to want to choose some cuts of pork that you may not normally work with. Of course, we're gonna start with a chunk of pork shoulder because that always cooks up so tender and beautiful. But then we're gonna add some pork shank to that because that adds a depth of flavor. And then we're gonna add some pig's feet, pig's trotters, because that's gonna give a texture that is so incomparably velvety to the broth. And then, if you wanna make the best ever red pozole, you're gonna need pig's head. Why pig's head? Because it adds complexity of flavor that makes everybody just swoon. Most people would think that if you're going to make the absolute best pot of pozole, you're going to start with the best dried corn. And in Mexico, everyone will tell you that the best dried corn for pozole is called maíz cacahuacincle. It's a type of dried corn that has a really, really large kernel, so it cooks up really puffy and very tender. But you'd have to cook this first with mineral lime, what's called cal here in Mexico, until the outside hull softens, and then you'd have to wash it off really well. Lots of steps to all of that, and to tell you the truth, what most people do is they start with the pre-cooked corn that's already gone through all of those steps. What I like about this one in this market is that it not only tells you it is the cacao simple corn, but it tells you it's had the top of it taken off or the head of it taken off, which means it's going to puff up really beautifully. It's one that's made in la casa, in the house, so it's a homemade variety of it. It's ready to go. All you have to do is put it on to simmer. Okay, we're ready to make pozole. Now, I already showed you in the market the dried corn, but this has to be cooked with the mineral lime. I showed you the stuff that's already been cooked with the mineral lime, which is what I'm going to use. This is called nixtamal or nixtamalized corn. And for those of you that don't live near a tortilleria or a Mexican grocery store, your best option is going to be to buy this dried product, which is the nixtamalized corn that has been dried again and it says on the package white corn pozole. Now most people will tell you to cook the corn and the pork together. I actually like to cook them separate because they cook better that way. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I've got a pot here with water in it and I'm going to add this nixtamalized corn to that and to that pot I'm going to put a whole head of garlic that's been peeled. Now we're on to the pork. 
We have all of those different cuts that I showed you in the market here, and I've got another pot over here filled with water as well. Shanks, pig's feet, the pork shoulder, and that chunk of the pig's head will go in there. I'm going to add some salt to the pot with the pork in it. I'll bring both of these to a boil, skim the pork pot as it comes to a nice simmer uh, for maybe 15 minutes or so, then partially cover both of these pans and let them simmer for three to four hours. Now I'm taking the meat out of the rich pork broth and I'm gonna let it cool for just a little bit till I can pull it apart and show you how to clean all those parts. But the next step here really is to prepare the flavoring for the pozole and it's gonna be flavored with ancho chilies. Um, when you buy the ancho chilies, you want them to be really soft like this, be really fragrant, smell like a sort of spicy dried fruit. And to tell you the truth, the preparation of them is super easy easy. You just tear the top off, that stem end off, open them up and get all of the seeds out of them. And then when I get finished with all of them, I'm going to cover them with hot tap water to rehydrate. No need to actually have boiling water, usually hot tap water will be sufficient for this. But I do like to lay a plate on the top just so that they'll rehydrate evenly. And to tell you the truth, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's enough for these to rehydrate. After the pork has cooled off a bit, shred the meat with your fingers. For the meat from the head and the cheek, I like to use a knife. And for the pig's feet, make sure to go through the meat and pull out any bone or tough cartilage. Then take the rehydrated chilies and put them in a blender jar along with their soaking liquid. Blend it all together until it's completely smooth. Okay, that's absolutely smooth and it's time to put it into the pozole corn. It reminds me of the fact that pozole actually comes from the Aztec language and it means foamy. These beautiful pieces of large, nixtamalized corn have kind of opened up, and what it looks like is that there's some sort of froth on the top of it. Now I've got a medium mesh strainer here. I'm gonna pour our ancho chili puree into the strainer. That's gonna catch any of the seeds that I didn't get. Also, any of the skins that were not fully blended. And I'm gonna stir that around. And now is the moment at which the pork broth is gonna go into the pot. Now, that just sits over kind of medium heat and simmers for about an hour or so. I'll keep tasting it to make sure any of that sort of raw chili flavor has mellowed completely, but with that rich pork broth in there, that won't be hard. Okay, it's almost time for us to serve the pozole. So I started getting all the garnishes together. I've got the whole leaf Mexican oregano, the crushed chili for those that like it a little spicier. I sliced up some limes for everyone to squeeze in. And then all I have left is to slice the radishes, thinly slice the cabbage, which is my choice over the head lettuce, and to chop up the white onion. When you serve raw onions, if you simply rinse them off under cold water, you'll take away a whole lot of that stuff that people don't like about raw onions. So I'm gonna scoop them into the strainer here and head over to the sink. I'll scoop those right into the bowl. And now all we have left is to add the meat back to the pozole, season it with some salt, and we're ready to serve.
You're always hearing me talk about Mexican oregano, but where can you find it? Really, what is this stuff? Well, of course you can find it in any Mexican grocery store and in many well-stocked grocery stores. In the Mexican grocery store, it will be sold in small cellophane packages and sold right alongside all the rest of the herbs and spices, or it may be sold in bulk. That's how much Mexican oregano is used in a lot of Mexican households here. But what is it? I mean, is it just regular oregano, regular Mediterranean oregano? Not even close. It's not even in the same family. This oregano, Mexican oregano, is in the verbena family. And when you smell it, it's got this kind of minty, grassy aroma not like the sweetness that we associate with Mediterranean oregano that you would say sprinkle over a pizza. And in the Mexican market, Mexican oregano is always sold in the whole leaf form. So truth be told, it is the green pozole that I get the most excited about. It's just the most luxurious in texture. And today I have a seafood version of that, one that's made with mussels that I think is just going to blow you away. Partly because it's delicious and luxurious and partly because it is really, really simple. The first step is to cut up half an onion, roughly chop some serrano chilies, take the tomatillo husks off of them and roughly chop those and make a puree with them. Everything is in the blender jar. I'm gonna give it a splash of chicken broth. You could make this whole thing with fish broth or with vegetable broth, any of those things. It's kind of slushy looking there. I've got a pan here that's over about a medium heat. Um, I like to cook this one with olive oil, but lots of people like to cook it either with freshly rendered pork lard or with vegetable oil, so you make your choice. When this is hot enough, I'm gonna add this all at once. You hear that crackle? Now while that is starting to cook, I'm gonna make the pumpkin seed blend, the puree, because that's what makes this dish so incredibly delicious. So I've got some toasted salted pumpkin seeds, the kind that you could find in the snack aisle of your grocery store. So we have eliminated the toasting and salting step. I'm gonna put those directly into the blender jar that we used for making the tomatillo puree. And this is where we're gonna add the herbs that make this so special. So I have five herbs for you to choose from. Of course there is parsley here which gives a beautiful deep rich color but not a lot of flavor. Epazote which is available widely in the United States and easy to grow and very classic Mexican herb. Cilantro that is available anywhere. These are the fronds off of a fennel bulb which will give you a beautiful herby flavor as well and then this is the star of the show. This is Oja Santa and this is what is often used in the pozole verde, the green pozole in Mexico. One of my favorite herbs. It's got an almost root beer-like smell to it, kind of slightly anise or maybe we should call it sarsaparilla. And I'm going to put one of these leaves in here just because I have them. They're not always available. I like to use a little bit of epazote because it's considered to be one of the bitter herbs, but actually it balances all of the natural sweetness of say the pumpkin seeds and the tomatillos that you find in this dish. And then I'm going to add a little bit of parsley. And I'm gonna do that because I like the color that it gives to it. And it's a very gentle herbaceous quality. So all of those go in here. Along with some more of our broth, this will take about a cup and a half or so to puree all of those toasted pumpkin seeds. We'll put it back on here and make the second puree, the herb and pumpkin seed puree. And now I'm going to pour that into 
this pan. The tomatillo mixture had cooked enough that it was starting to darken in color just a little bit. The rest of our broth will go in here. And now we're just gonna let this simmer 20 minutes or so just for those flavors to all come together. No matter how well you've blended your mixture, the little bits of pumpkin seed will expand a bit as they simmer. So to get it perfectly smooth, I like to blend the sauce a second time. Make sure to take the cap out of the top of your blender jar to allow steam to escape. When it's velvety smooth, pour it back in the pan and let it simmer for a few minutes more. Okay, looks wonderful. Now to give that kind of seafood flavor and to follow the tradition that a lot of people use in the state of Guerrero, where this is one of the state dishes, I'm going to mash some sardines. Now when you buy sardines, sometimes they'll have that little spine in there. So you want to pull those out, put them into a bowl. And I'm going to take a little bit of our green pozole base and add that to the sardines and then use a fork to just mash that until everything has been mashed together thoroughly. That'll go right into the pot. So stir all of that in and now it's going to go in the pozole corn, the hominy. And for this particular recipe, just because I'm streamlining everything, I'm going to use the one that you can buy in a can already. So I'm going to put a couple of cans of the hominy, juice and all. This will take about 15 or 20 minutes now to come to a simmer. Now's the moment to put the mussels into the simmering pozole verde. You always wanna buy mussels from a place where there's a lot of turnover so that you can be sure that they're very fresh. They should be tightly closed. Um, if they're not completely tightly closed, just like this one's just a tiny bit open, you can make sure that they're still lively. Just like that one is now completely closed. That indicates that these are still lively mussels. They have to be scrubbed. And if you find beards on the outside of them, then you wanna pull those out. Make sure that they're well scrubbed on the outside so that there's no sand or anything that gets into the pozole. So now is the moment to put them in. It'll only take three or four minutes for them to all open up and we're ready to serve. I'm gonna start with a little bit of red onion. Sprinkle that in there. And then I love avocado with pozole verde because the creaminess just matches so beautifully with the creaminess of the pumpkin seed sauce. Then I've got the crunchy chicharron, Mexican oregano. This is just a must to go onto pozole rubbed between your palms. You're always going to want to serve your pozole verde, like all pozoles, with a stack of fresh, crispy tostadas to munch alongside all of the rich creaminess that you find in this exquisite version of Muscle Pozole Verde. Okay, so I fired up your appetite. Some of my favorite dishes, entertaining tips, and Mexican travel inspirations. Well, now I want to hear what you have to say. Visit us at rickbayless.com slash TV for recipes and a whole lot more.